Guys, this market has been crazy to say the least. Uh, it's like I stepped out of the office and everything went, went haywire. We've got the dollar index trending lower. We've got stocks dropping when I first left and then rebounding to all time highs. Gold all over the place here. I mean, I, it looked like, uh, you know, we were seeing a breakout there and then a big sell off here overnight. And again, the S&P 500 is just at the all time highs. And what's crazy about this is that it looked like it had aggressive selling and then just turned around like nothing ever happened. And, you know, yeah, you, I've been out of the, the loop of it, guys. I've been, um, you know, when, when I'm when I'm in the thick of it, I'm staring at this stuff for hours and hours a day and I'm reading into everything that's happening fundamentally and economic data and, and you know, central bank drama and all that good stuff. I'm a little bit out of it to be completely um, uh, transparent with you guys, but I have been able to just keep in touch with the edge finder and the edge finder has kept me relatively up to speed. What I can see here is that there's been a, a slew of economic data that's come out cool, which is continuing to keep gold as a bullish setup for me. I'm going to be watching gold here, by the way, out of the gate. Um, but we had uh, Europe cut its central uh, bank rate or the ECB cut rates for the first time. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, that's that's big stuff in terms of economic data I, I need to give a quick update here so gdp prints again lower than expected economic data seems to be cooling and seems to continue to be the case so let's take a look at this um economic data gdp numbers came in lighter than anticipated okay pmi data what about this Again, I can use the edge finder to keep myself up to date even when I'm not staring at this stuff 24 seven. That is the entire purpose of the software tool. PMI numbers for manufacturing came in lighter than expected. So some cool down on the manufacturing side, that's not great for the economic output, but then services came in strong. Okay, so some news there. Retail sales, haven't had anything new since I left. Uh, May 15th, still showing cool down in the retail sales side of things. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at the jobs number. That's obviously what we're gathered here today for. We'll be getting our latest NFP number claims. Uh, unemployment claims continue to slowly, gradually grind higher. Jolts continue to trend lower. Economic data seems to be pointing to one thing, a very gradual decline here. Now, the debate where things get interesting is whether or not this slowdown trend is just a short-term cooling of the economy, which would arguably be a very positive thing because it would help to get inflation under control. Or is this the start of a bigger economic downturn, in which case we just swap out the problem of high inflation for slowing economy? That is the question. And I do not know the answer, but I can tell you this. Right now, it seems to be that the story, the, the ship has turned. And when I say the ship has turned, I'm talking about the dollar. The dollar to me seems like it is headed lower. It has continued, we've been bearish on the dollar. It's made a lot of sense to stay bearish on the dollar in my personal view because economic data continues to roll in cool. And that cooling economic data means likely inflation problems go away. But the real question is, from there, do you swap it out for economic recession concerns? That's where the bigger picture, I think, is. All right, let's keep going. Um, take a look at the S&P 500. Again, as we get into the NFP jobs numbers, it's not, it's not the, uh, just in case my wife is listening, it is not the live stream. It is the castle with my wife and um, Ireland. Okay. Yeah, Ireland, beautiful. So green. Um. So the S&P 500, again, hovering just around the all-time highs here as we go into this jobs data. And I, I texted Frank this morning who, who you know, he was asking, you know, what are your thoughts on NFP as we come into this? And of course, Frank, who shows up on the live stream pretty regularly, him and I have been trading together for a number of years. And, um, you know, I said, I really don't know what happens to stocks today if jobs data comes in weak. I said that if, if you get jobs data really weak, does the market cheer that and say, well, rate cuts are now certainly coming? Or does the market say, okay, that's just too much bad news in terms of the economy. We might start to chill out on this all-time high stuff. I don't really know. To be honest, the market is very, very emotional right now. Market seems to be rallying on anything, so I would not be surprised if either direction 
the jobs data comes out, the S&P 500 moves higher. Um, but again, I'm not. That's not something I'm chasing. I think the big drop in gold is very attractive. If I do see, you know, if you get weak jobs numbers and we're down in these areas here today, I like the idea of buying gold. So I may be entering a trade on that side. This week only, our trading software, the Edge Finder, is 20% off. We've been working hard to make the Edge Finder the best trading tool on the market by including even more scoring metrics to make our bullish and bearish biases even more accurate. With the Edge Finder, you'll get a daily list of top setups, access to our COT data and retail sentiment breakdowns, brand new fundamental data tabs like interest rates data, CPI data, seasonality, and labor market data. The Edge Finder is used by both swing traders and day traders all over the world, including our very own trader, Nick, who uses it in all of his trading setups. If you want access to the Edge Finder, you can find it down in the description below, but don't forget this big 20% discount is isn't around much longer, so get it before it's too late. But in terms of setups that I like here today, I'll show you guys my current positions. I shorted gold in the VIP room, um, still in this trade. Oil, I'm sorry, I shorted oil in the VIP room. I don't know if I said gold, but um, I'm still in this trade. I shorted this one and uh, have been holding on to this one. It's, it's a winner so far, but to be honest with you, it's got to hold this area here. So I'm going to just show you, this is USO for those of you guys who trade stocks or ETFs. It's the same thing as trading oil um, just through an ETF. And so I've, I've shorted oil. My position is up a thousand bucks. I've given back a lot of the gains on this trade as markets have rebounded a little bit. I think off of the prospect of rate cuts, uh, Europe did cut the, their rate, right? ECB cut the rate for the first time. Um, Bank of Canada was the first one to cut rates. You know, you're seeing a pattern, a trend towards rate cuts. That makes me want to really buy gold. But I, again, I have to still adhere to my strategy. I will be looking for that. If I take any trade setups, you guys will see it inside of the Discord channel. And if you're not in the Discord channel, we'll send the link to where you can apply to join. If you're not already in the Discord channel, take two seconds. Highly recommend that you join the Discord. Um, we're coming into breaking news here in just about 10 seconds ago. Let's go ahead and just do breaking news really quick. All right, guys, let's see what we get. NFP jobs numbers will be coming out in just a moment. Um, let me just pull up the data here. Jobs data should be coming out any second now. Okay, jobs data just came out. Dollar index is up. S&P, Dow, and NAS are down. Euro, pound, gold down here. What would that suggest? <sighs> well, I would imagine it's a good jobs data print, but the market's not going to love that because it might hurt the probabilities of rate cuts. Um, all right, payrolls came out. Let's see refresh this number. There we go. Okay. So we've got our numbers out here this morning. Average hourly earnings. That was hotter than expected, uh, both month over month and year over year. Don't, don't sleep on that. That's an important figure right there. Um, Non-farm payrolls were higher than anticipated by a long shot, by almost 100,000. They also revised um, just slightly down the previous months. So this is a, this is a hot job sprint so far here. Unemployment rate ticked higher to 4%. So that's one for the bulls on the stock market side. Kind of weird, but they want the uh, unemployment rate to continue to trickle higher. Um, gold, uh, again, and, and you know everything else, strong jobs numbers is going to hurt the story for gold here a little bit. Euro, uh, NAS, SPX, how, how much of a drop are we looking at here? Eh, it's not too big. You've got less than half a percent drop on the uh, the indices here this morning the russell getting hurt the most which makes a lot of sense interest rate sensitive side of things gold down 2.5 percent silver down 4.5 percent here today guys that is a substantial uh it's a substantial move also i apologize but i need to really quick wti C O U S D. Um, the oil, uh, one of the oil charts that I was using on um, on TradingView stopped working, so I had to switch it over to Oanda's feed. So I just did that really quick. But uh, yeah, inter interesting moves here this morning. Again, jobs data coming in um, hotter than expected. 
The big one here is average hourly earnings, which does add inflationary pressures here. They revised the previous up from 3.9 to 4, and the latest data was expected to come out 3.9, higher than expected here year over year at a 4.1%. This is inflationary to a degree. Uh, because remember, if you get people getting raises, obviously that's great for the individuals who get a raise and hopefully that helps them out. But what it doesn't do on a big scale is it doesn't help the story of inflation. If everybody's getting raises, they go buy houses, they go buy cars, they go buy, you know, they go travel and that activity helps to stir more inflation. So the whole fight here with economic data being strong is that that contributes to more inflation. So the, the market is wanting to see, when I say the market, I'm talking about the stock market, Wall Street, et cetera. They want to see rates um, uh, come down. And in order to see interest rates come down, they need inflation to come down. And so inflation uh, is not helped by these numbers here today. People are getting jobs. People are uh, getting raises. And that, of course, does not help the inflation story. So the market is uh, not loving that here today. The dollar index is up 104.6 here. Take a look just for a second for my currency traders out there. Let's have a look at some of the major currency pairs. Uh, Euro dollar getting a bullish reading, Aussie dollar, pound dollar. These scores, once updating, are going to be a little bit different, but the euro might still hold on to a bullish reading. I'm just going to wait for that to update on my end. Um, dollar Swiss getting a very bearish reading, which I think is interesting. I will actually be looking at Dollar Swiss again, just out of curiosity on that front. If you get a pullback up into this 90-20 level on USDCHF, that might be an interesting trade for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that that's a 50% retracement on the daily chart. Yeah, that's a 50% retracement off the daily level. That might be a trade I'm watching. Unemployment rate did tick higher, but wage growth was strong. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, mm. overall uh, report. What are your thoughts on what we saw here today? No, it was not really that bad. Um, when NFP is going up like that, especially when the economy is not really performing very well. So the only thing that won't be nice is if maybe we also see CPI going up, that is going to be a problem. But for now, mm. when people are getting some jobs, that it's actually good for the for the whole economy. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. I mean, the thing is, I was pointing this out earlier that um, the market itself didn't love this report initially because uh, perhaps mm. the idea is that, well, if you get higher jobs, it's going to lead to what you just mentioned, perhaps a hotter inflation print. And if you see inflation stay hot, then the Fed may not cut rates. But um, yes. I'm kind of in the, the thought process of I actually want the jobs data to be strong if I'm going to be bullish on the stock market. I like the idea of people getting hired. Um, and and I'm, that doesn't make me too afraid as long as we do kind of still have the inflation story, the backdrop overall. Um, I'm not too worried by this. That being said, the market is really, really showing its true colors here by saying we want economic data to continue to come in smooth and lighter than expected in order to really solidify mm -hmm. that rate cuts are coming. Is that is that what you're thinking too? Yes. Plus, if you check the stock markets, like they are not really uh, like on a negative side. What do we see? They are actually on the highest levels. If you see, yeah. if you check maybe S&P 500, NASDAQ, they all actually higher. So for us to have a nice room to buy again, we know we have to buy low. So it means we have to wait for the market to go a little bit lower. So it's sure. actually a good thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that being said, you know, you had just a, a incredibly quick drop followed by a very, very strong rally here recently. It just goes to show the market is finding any reason it, it wants to right now to to continue to push higher overall. And, um, you know, I, I was pointing out earlier that uh, we talk sometimes about individual companies and just how important it is. It seems like the whole market mm -hmm. is being just carried still by the NVIDIA story. I don't know if you... Uh, uh, trade nvidia specifically if you just watch it but uh the nvidia story is just a crazy one this stock is just a as just a you know seemingly can you can do no wrong stock uh and is pulling up the whole market what are your thoughts on this do you think it just keeps going or do you think it's due for a bigger pullback what are your thoughts 
Now, I think it's a good thing at the moment because if you still remember the time they released their earnings, the market did not really uh, move that much. It did, yes. but not that much. And if you checked other companies which also are actually adapting to AI, they did not really move that much because I think it's, it, it was that week where they were talking about interest rate cuts. And I think there were people who actually said, no, they don't really think it's a good time to cut the rate. And that actually overshadowed the, the, the results from NVIDIA. But when we check, actually, those results were very good and it shows that AI is not really going anywhere. And people are starting to make money with that, you see. So, and we saw a few weeks ago, I think it's last week, we saw AMD and Intel also doing the same uh, with introduction of their AI. So that also boost the AI thing, uh, especially mm -hmm. on NVIDIA, because it seems to be the, the, the one which has the bigger market share. So it's a very nice bullish actually move i think it's it can still go even higher but somewhere somehow a reversal is going to be there sure yeah no I, I agree i think i think it's it's a really strong company and for a good reason it continues to pull the market higher um i do think that when you get moves like that you've got to be a little careful that the, the pullback can be pretty violent but uh, i do think that overall the company probably continues to go higher and continues to support the stock market story that being said, Kenz, I also want to ask you about the dollar index and gold because a lot of traders, of course, in the audience are very focused on gold and the dollar itself. Um, the dollar is bouncing off of this level here today. Do you think that this is perhaps, uh, you know, are we finding a bottom mm. here for the dollar index and potentially going to start breaking out? Or do you think that this is just, just a bounce and that the, the bear trend could continue here and perhaps take out 104? What are your thoughts on the dollar index right now? Yeah, I think we will see, as you can see, we actually on a very nice uh, uh, downtrend structure, even though it's not really that aggressive. I'm expecting to see a continuation of that. So, yes, now we just had the news, but I think we might have something like this. I think we're going to see a continuation of that sell. So I don't really see it continuing to go to the upside. It might be good for now, but the overall structure might actually continue to go down. Sure. And, uh, you know, a weakening dollar would be helpful to a couple of different areas of the market, the, the indices, of course, but also gold. Um, gold has, again, seen a pretty substantial drop today. In fact, in the market uh, today, I would say for, for our audience, probably the most interesting topic right now is this big drop in the one day chart view of gold. I mean, take a look at the, the mm. hourly chart here and you've had a drop from peak to trough of near three, well, just about 3% uh, on the price of gold trading from around 2387 down to where we are now. Uh, it's a big drop. And, um, you know, we've come into a level of what kind of seems like support on the daily chart here for gold. But do you think that yes. this jobs data coming out so strong could lead to a bigger bigger pullback uh, or do you think this is a potential dip buying opportunity no i don't think that is going to continue that much because even if we have nfp today which is very good i think the the topic that is still actually in it's going to be it's actually bigger than uh, nfp it's still interest rates cuts are they yeah. going to cut the rates or not because we know that uh, actually interest rates, they, they don't really come every month, but NFP, it's monthly. It's not. It's, it's very important, but not really like interest rates. So if they're going to cut the rates, I think it's where we're going to see a nice continuation, maybe. Sorry, if they don't cut the rates, it's where we're going to see a continuation. But if they do cut, I'm expecting to see a very nice reversal. Yeah, but at the I, moment, I, it seems like even though we have maybe NFP and the market tried to move, I don't think it's enough to change the overall uh, move. Maybe two candlesticks yeah. might be stronger or bearish, but at the end of the day, the market might still reverse and continue with that structure. Well, and you know, Kenzo, there's something I would even add to that. You know, it's all you brought it back into focus that the whole thing about gold right now is all about interest rate cuts. And um, we did get a little bit of, of news this week from the ECB. They cut the rates. And Bank of Canada yes. 
cut the rates. So what we're seeing here is a bit of a trend towards, okay, the cat is out of the bag. We're starting to see, you know, um, you know, pin to parchment, right? They're actually doing it. They're actually starting to cut rates. And um, mm. that by itself, I think is actually a positive for gold. And, and a lot of times, you know, with the stock market, uh, there is this idea that you really want to be buying stocks before they cut the rates, the rumor of the rate cuts. But then when they actually mm. start to cut the rates, a lot of times you want to actually be long gold because a lot of times what happens is that the economy sliding hard enough is what really gets rate cuts to happen. And in that case, the economy sliding enough could hurt earnings reports for stocks. And perhaps the best time to be long stocks is before the rate cuts. And after the rate cuts start to roll in, maybe that's where you want to be more long gold. At least in my opinion, that's kind of the play. I, I want to be long gold mm. in both the rumor of rate cuts as well as when they actually start to rate cut. And although this is not the US that cut rates this week, um, the ECB and the Bank of Canada making that move is a um, a great start, I think, for the overall uh, continued bullish story of gold. I think we're consolidating here. If we take a look at the daily chart, we have not moved that far, um, but I don't take that as a bearish signal, right? I, I take this as just a pause. Uh, you know, we had a huge mm -hmm. run up in the price of gold. We are now trading sideways on a daily level. But to me, I'm like you, uh, where I think that levels of support are buying opportunities to add to a position and to, to see if this thing can continue higher. If it doesn't, if it completely yes. runs through all of that, then obviously I was wrong about that idea. But uh, I think we're on the same page with that. Yes. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, already we see other banks trying to cut the rates. So that obviously there is going to be a trend going further. And I don't see U.S. not cutting the rates. So I think there will be. it's just going to be obvious that they're going to cut the rates. And at the moment, since it's going to be like that, the market will be pricing itself before that. So it means it's actually a good time for people to buy the stocks because mostly when we buy shares or stocks, the we actually buy in when we expect something good to happen. So which means the market might be trying to price itself to future prices. So if maybe they cut the rates, we might not really see that bigger move, but from this week or previously or previous uh, before they cut the rates, that is, can, is going to be a very nice time for us to have those bigger moves. Once they cut, it's no longer going to be a surprise. So we'll know that, oh, we we're expecting that. But now I think we might have some serious reversals, especially when they are, especially when the market is going down like now. I think it's going to be a very good time for us just to jump in. But the thing is, uh, we just need to get in at the right time so that we don't really have the swings. But I think we are going to see some serious reversals. Sure. Yeah, I think we're on the same page with that for sure, Kenzo. I mean, that, that's the thing is... Uh when it comes to news, what you guys have to understand is the market is always looking ahead of time. Uh, a lot of traders who are new, they think mm. that the news is trading off of what happened, uh, you know, just now. But the market is always actually trading on what is expected to happen in the future, right? So everyone, uh, mm. you know, who is looking at the markets on, on rate cuts, they're not, they're, they're wondering what are rate cuts going to look like for the remainder of this year? What are we going to look like in December? What are we going to look like in January of 2025? The market is very much looking ahead of time to try and forecast to the best of its ability where things are going from here. So the stock market today trading lower because yes. it's thinking, well, hey, jobs data is coming in strong. That might prolong when we see our first rate cut, which that rate cut is what's going to help the idea is rate cuts would um, stimulate the economy, make affordable borrowing uh, happen again, and then people could go out and spend, and that's going to be good for, for earnings, right? That's the idea around rate cuts. But if you get hot jobs prints, in the short term, the idea is, oh no, that hurts the uh, when that rate cut is going to come out, so people are selling some shares. Now, that being said, as Kenzo mentioned earlier, I actually think that that pullback, if we get one, is a great buying opportunity uh, to pick up shares at a discount, at a pullback, 
if we can get it. But again, we will just have to see. Uh, this market seems to want to buy every little dip. So it's uh, it's everybody's kind of got the same idea, I think. So did you know we do a live trading show Monday through Friday with guests from all over the world? To get notified when we go live, click the bell button next to the subscribe button or check in at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have helpful free content in the description below and on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you tomorrow.